Dr. David Korsmeyer, you're the Deputy Director with Ames Research with NASA. Thank you very much for joining us on Australia in Space TV. My and pleasure. joining us in Perth for the Indo-Pacific Space and Earth Conference. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Look, you had a great session this morning talking about autonomous systems in space. Mm -hmm. uh, and NASA's got a range of different projects underway. I suppose the key question would be, what, what brings you to Perth, Western Australia for this particular conference? Well, one, very simply, I was invited. Two, uh, this is a great conference kind of showing uh, a novel set of industries getting involved in space. Western Australia's got some great technologies in the mining area, remote operations, and we're interested to see how NASA can benefit and leverage those technologies and those capabilities. The Australian Space Agency in particular has you know, encouraged us to engage and see where there's good opportunities. Um, we've learnt on some of the small sat technologies. We uh, just heard from Dr. Butler Hine on the Helios Swarm. Mm -hmm. Those those kind of autonomous technologies and, and uh, uh, form factors that they're in. How much do you see that relating to other industries like mining resources and agriculture and those remote operations and autonomous? Uh, how much related? How much relationship do you see between those? Cross sectors, I suppose. Well, I, I would say actually surprisingly more than you might think. Um, part of the uh, innovation and the small sat capability that NASA is making use of and is kind of starting to revolutionize some of the space sector in the U.S. is that they're not using traditional components. They're taking what we're going to call consumer grade or other sectors well-defined capabilities, and then we're qualifying them, making basically doing a little extra testing to see if they can be used in space. So I am sure that the mining industry capability that are already out in the outback doing exceptionally hard activities in very extreme environments, with a little bit of adjustment, can fly quite well in space. Same thing for the undersea activities that are being done. There's great technology, great software, great skills, and you can talk about repurposing them into the space domain. Now, is it going to be a one-to-one? -one? No, but it's going to be pretty close, and you're not starting from zero in any way. Do you see the two aligned already? How much, one question I've asked in the past is, who's learning more off each other? Is it the space sector going, actually, no, we're pretty good, we're, we're, you know, we're, in, we're in, a, uh, in a head? Or do you find, no, actually, we've got a lot more to learn about what other industries have been doing on their own? Well, it, uh, I think the answer is yes which means uh, both sides are gonna learn, right? Uh, the space sector is really good at flying something in space, but now we're talking about doing something. Uh, and if you're gonna be looking at doing something, that doing something almost always has an analogy for happening on Earth, right? If we're gonna cook food, we wanna go find a chef, right? You don't want a bunch of rocket scientists cooking food in space. Now, making the food, okay, we'll also go find a farmer. If we're gonna get access to resources, we wanna find miners, right? Talk to the people who know the domain and then we'll help them translate it into the quirkiness that is space or another planetary body. But it's easier for us to take an expert and have them learn a new place than it is for us to be a rocket scientist and learn a whole new domain. Doesn't make sense. I suppose rather than the technology transfer, it's those operations. Do you think that's where the missions to the moon and missions to Mars is driving uh, a, a review towards operations that humans will be operational on these uh, bodies? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's one thing to go and do it once or do it twice. You can kind of um, learn as you go and not be 100% perfect because you're just trying to do it once or twice. If you're setting up a sustainable activity, a long-term activity, um, you want to learn best practices, right? Why try to reinvent best practices? NASA is really good at flying the International Space Station because nobody else has tried to do that before. Uh, we do that 24 by 7 by 365. But when it comes to doing things on a surface, you want to look to good analogies of, hey, um, McMurdo Station in the South Pole, which is in a harsh environment, having a, a base of people doing very interesting science. Or you want to look to groups that know how to work in very harsh uh, environments and extract resources, the mining industry. One last question, how have you found uh, the conference so far? Uh, it's been really good actually. I think the turnout's been phenomenal, the dialogue's been excellent, um, the overall management of it has been really quite robust. I mean, it's, it's been a good activity. I'm really pleased I came. Well, we've uh, spent in the afternoon on robotics and autonomous systems. You kicked off today, day two. Uh, on autonomous space systems, so I'm looking forward to the rest of the day.
David, David, uh, Dr. David Corsby. Thank you so much for joining us on Australia Space TV. My pleasure, Chris. Thank you for inviting me.